Mm, hi everybody. It's about a minute before 10 and let me know if you can hear me okay. All right, we've got one viewer. Yay, five viewers. Yay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's cooking demonstration. I've posted the links to both my recipes at the top of this post, so hopefully you can see that. If you can hear me or you just want to say hi, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm looking at that here on my laptop, which is on my cat tree. Hi, Patricia. Loud and clear. Thanks, Debbie. Right. Hello. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Anne. Sound is good. Yay. Hi, Carolyn. Cape Cod. Nice. Feel free to tell me where you're from. It's always fun to see where other people are from. Hi, Susie. Hi, Linda. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Patty from Canada. Hi, Dora. Long Island. Hi, Stephanie. I'm starting to recognize my regulars for the online classes. Thank you guys for coming back each week. This is fun. Toronto. Hi, Dora. Hi, Debbie from Idaho. Deborah. Hi, Gary. Cook away. <laughs> Near Chef AJ. All right. Um, wow. I just love this that people are from all over. Thanks for telling me where you're from. Woohoo. Lucy Wright. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you're new to my videos, welcome. My name is Kathy Fisher. And for the last few months, I've been teaching online live videos on Facebook, which will be available after we're done, as well as on my YouTube channel, Straight Up Food. And if you're not familiar with my cookbook, here it is, Straight Up Food. And I wrote this about three and a half years ago, or it came out three and a half years ago. And um, both the recipes I'm making today, the veggie burgers and the ketchup, are in the Straight Up Food cookbook. You can get this on Amazon, my website, um, you can get it in digital format, uh, whatever, whatever you like. It's all there. It lays flat, which we all love. It's got lots of pictures and it's got a lot of support information too. If you're new to this way of eating, which is 100% plants, no added salt, oil or sugar or gluten. This talks, this gives you almost a hundred recipes. Plus it also talks about why we eat this way, why we are SOS free and plant-based and why it's so good for our bodies. And then in the back, there's lots of articles about how to buy herbs and spices, how to know if they're old, how to cook without oil, how to make your own salad dressings. Um, there's just all kinds of good stuff, how to read food labels. So check out the book if you're interested. If you have any questions about it, just leave a comment there. I'm going to set this back here for now. And thank you to everyone who has purchased the book over the last few years. It's, it's just changed the game for me. And if you love the book, please leave a um, little review on Amazon. If you have an Amazon membership, that would be great. That really helps me out. And so what we do here, sometimes we go a half hour, sometimes we go an hour or over, but I try to, I want to try to keep it an hour or under. Um, AJ has a cooking demo starting today too. Oh, I forget what her guest's name is, but go over to Chef AJ's page when you're done here. She starts at 11 and she always has wonderful guests every single day. So what I'm going to do is make the veggie burgers first and get those going. And then we're going to do some ketchup. Now I made ketchup in my online class about a month ago or so, but I'm going to make it again because it goes so well with veggie burgers. And then periodically, I'm going to check the comments over here just to see if you guys have any questions. And I do have a moderator here. So if you have any, um, like what page or whatever, they can answer that for you. 
Hi, Jim. Hi, Linda. Hi, Evelyn. Okay, love the book. Thank you guys for all the book love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And there are more websites at straightupfood.com that have come out since the book came out, so check that out as well. All right, so I chose to make veggie burgers today, and let me just say, I'm gonna be doing these 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time live videos for the rest of July, or through July, and after that, I might be going back to work in person. We'll see, I'll let you know, I'll keep you updated, but I'm really excited to be doing these throughout July on Tuesdays. All right, so veggie burgers. I'm making these because 4th of July is coming up and burgers and 4th of July just go together. So, and someone also in a past live class asked me to make these. So I thought I would make them for you today. They're super easy. Seems like every vegan chef has a vegan or veggie burger. And there's so many different ways you can make them. This is just my way. Um, and basically, we're just taking some grains and some veggies and some herbs and spices here, and we're sticking them all together, and then we're going to fry them up in our uh, nonstick fry pan here. This is an Ozeri, O-Z-E-R-I, and it's my current favorite nonstick pan. It's got a ceramic coating, and it's fairly reasonably priced. So you can check this out in my website store where I have all my favorite um, cooking utensils and items. So check that out. So before I preheat that, I'm going to get the dough ready for our burgers here. Now, I am going to use a food processor today. If you don't have a food processor, I've heard of many people who make these burgers without it. They just put everything in the bowl and squish it up, stir it up, whatever works for you, and they just have like a chunkier, more textury burger. But I'm going to show you the food processor way because I think it makes the burgers more look more like traditional burgers, uh, texture-wise. All right. This is a 14-cup Cuisinart food processor. I like a big one because then I can do larger quantities. If I only have the small one, I can only do as much as fits in the, fits in the small one. Uh, some of them come with a big jar as well as a small one inside, and that would be great, too. But I've never really wanted a smaller one than this. So this is 14. I would say get at least 11 to a 14. And this is a Cuisinart, but Hamilton Beach, KitchenAid, those are all really good brands for food processors. All right. So I'm going to be using my S-Blade today. And as I said, this is super easy. Oh, before I do that, I'm trying not to look at my recipe and just remember how it goes and sometimes I forget but before I do that I'm going to add everything to a bowl because the one drawback about a food processor is if you're not completely blending something sometimes it doesn't turn everything over evenly so I like to put all my ingredients in a bowl first mix it up a little and then put it in the food processor all right so the first step is the rice so I'm using some short grain brown rice. This helps hold everything together because we're not having any added fat in this. So no vegan butter, tofu or nuts or seeds or anything. So this sticky brown rice is going to help hold everything together along with our kidney beans. I made this this morning and it's a half cup short grain brown rice and one cup water cooked with a lid on, on low simmer. You bring it to a boil, and then you bring it down to a low simmer. You cover it, and you cook it for about 50 minutes, 50, 5, 0, and then you remove it from the heat for about 10 minutes so it can firm up and finish up. I like the short grain brown rice better than the long grain because the short grain is stickier. Now, if you only had long grain, that would probably work too, but I like the short grain. All right, so that is our cooked rice. Uh, that's about a half. Mm, about a cup and a half cooked. All right. All right. So next we are going to add, I have everything measured out and prepped today, so this will come together pretty quickly. So this is one can of kidney beans drained and rinsed. And you want to be sure you drain and rinse the beans for this recipe so they're on the dry side because we don't want this extra wet. And I just used the Whole Foods 365 brand. Oh, 
I'm trying to remember to show it under here, um, of kidney beans. And am I, am I having this in the right spot? Um, there it is. There it is. Okay. Um, so this is a no salt added bean. You can make your beans at home from scratch, from dry beans if you want, uh, but these are cooked beans. All right, so that's about a cup and a half. And then this is one cup rolled oats, just regular old fashioned rolled oats. If you're a person who can't eat oats, you might look into rolled um, quinoa flakes. They're called quinoa flakes. Uh, so that work a little better for you. All right, we've got a quarter cup of tomato paste. If you already have ketchup made, I'm making the ketchup second today, so I can't use it in here. But if you have ketchup already made, you can use that as well. So a quarter cup of tomato paste. And I think I said in last week's video, for last week's class, you always want to make sure you read your tomato paste label to make sure it just has tomato in it and citric acid, no oil or salt or anything like that. Just simple. Okay, so we've got our beans, our oats. We're going to put in, this is a half of a large onion. I guess I don't need that. You can use a white onion, yellow onion, red onion, doesn't really matter. And this is about six cremini mushrooms. And I always do this. I forgot to save one out that's whole, but they're just the brown uh, cremini mushrooms there. If you can't find the brown ones, you can use the white ones. Okay. And I did chop some of this and you may be wondering why did she chop everything if it's going in the food processor or she's going to mix it in here. It just makes it easier to measure um, since mushrooms come in all different sizes. And now we're going to add all of our dried herbs and spices. So this is a lot of flavor suckers in here, the oats, the rice, the beans. So we need a lot, we need to add a lot of flavor. So this is two teaspoons of granulated garlic. I use granulated, you can use powdered if you want or minced, but I like granulated because it never clumps. It's just, it's just like sand. This is one and a half teaspoons of chili powder. This is a mild chili powder. If you like things hot and spicy, you can use a spicier one. Let me just double check my amounts here. Um, okay. And then we've got some cumin, uh, one teaspoon and also one teaspoon granulated onion. I know we already have onion in there, but that, that dried onion just adds even more flavor. And then on the recipe, it calls for dried basil and dried oregano. Nowadays, I just tend to, because I'm lazy, I just use the Italian seasoning here that has everything in it already. It's got thyme, oregano, basil, marjoram, rosemary, and basil. So any kind of green herb would work. Um, and you can get Italian seasoning anywhere. You can get herbs. So I've combined those two. So this is um, about a tablespoon of green herbs. Okay. All right. So just give this a mix or stir. You need to scrape your spoon off, do that. Okay. Now this was a quarter cup of tomato paste, so I didn't use the whole can or jar. So you can put any tomato paste that you don't use into a little tiny snack Ziploc bag and just put it in the refrigerator and to the freezer. And then when you need it and you want to just throw it into a soup or stew that you're making on the fly, you can you can do that. All right. Okay. 
Now, if you don't like mushrooms, I love mushrooms. You probably know that about me by now because I put them in a lot of things. Um, I'm not sure what you would put in. You could leave the mushrooms out and I think it would still work just fine. You could put something else in that you like. Uh, I'm wondering what some eggplant or I have a burger recipe on my website that has plantain in it. I'm sure there's something you could put in its place. Um, okay. If you didn't have kidney beans, you could probably also use black beans. Or you could probably use cannellini beans too. There's so many options with cooking. Okay. So that looks good. Um, and let me just check the comments. Um, Before I move on, you could use tofu in place of mushrooms. Oh, that's a great idea. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, I don't use tofu very much, um, but yeah, that's right. So happy you're here for another month. Thank you, guys. I am fully entrenched in the video realm, finally. Um, I like the small one for when I make the frosting. They are both useful. Yes, okay. All right. The comments keep jumping. Uh, I have that pan. I like it, but the discoloration. Um, someone was commenting about this pan, how it can get discolored. Yeah, it's got a white coating, so it can get a little discolored. I find if you really scrub the heck out of it, um, that does come off for the most part. But yeah, they also sell these in, I think, black or gray if you don't want the white one. And then they sell the pan separate from the lid. So I don't have the lid, but I want to get it. I don't know why they did that. All right. Um, my kitten video is hilarious. Yeah, I posted uh, my five foster kittens the other day and put some music to it. I still have them. They're like nine weeks now. And I found out I'm going to have them for another week until they go fly away till their, to their forever homes. Um, all right. Okay. So we've got all this ready. Now we're going to transfer half of it to the food processor. We don't want it all in here because it'll come to the top and it'll have a hard time turning over. So we're just going to do half. And as I said, some people that don't have the food processor, at this point, they'll just kind of mash everything up. I don't know if they use their hands or not, but really get everything kind of tight. Um, in that case, I would cut the mushrooms. I would chop them much smaller. I would chop, chop the onions smaller. You could even, let's see, what else? You could even use quick cooking oats. That might help. All right, so I'm going to put about half of this in. Okay. And let's see. Okay. And I'm just going to set this to the side. I'm just going to pulse it. And when I get about that far in, I like to scrape down the sides. Mm. Okay. It likes to fly up and stick on the sides. So just look at it. It, it looks too loose still. It should be starting to um, stick together like pie crust. I'm going to give it a little bit more. Mmm, that looks perfect. All right. And I just remembered I need yet another bowl. Um, I mean, I could just grab out of this um, to start making my burgers, but I like to put it in another bowl first. And then also take out, take out the S-blade. OK. 
Okay. And I'll show this to you up close here in a sec. Alrighty. Um, okay. So here's what it looks like. And you can see the texture. It's fine, but not too fine. You can still see little bits of everything in there. Um, I'm only going to do half the batch because I don't need to do the whole batch for this video. I'll finish it later. So I'm going to move my food processor out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and preheat my pan here. And if you want to know when it's hot and ready, just put a little bit of water in the middle. And when it starts sizzling and boiling a little bit, then you'll know it's nice and hot. I have it up about medium. This portable stovetop cooks really hot. So I'm going to try not to overcook my burgers. Um, okay. So while that's heating up, we're going to get our burgers ready. And what I like to do is get a little bit of parchment paper. It makes it a little bit cleaner. Parchment paper is a nice um, cooking paper that nothing sticks to. It. Um, but I like it today because we're going to use it to flatten the burgers out and they won't stick to it. So cut out a piece and then cut that in half. And we're going to just put that flat and then we're going to have this for the top. So that is already sizzling away. I'm just going to, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Um, okay. All right. So take a, a handful. And you can make your burgers as big or small as you want. You can make big ones, little ones, doesn't matter. Press it together. And once you get it in a ball, um, kind of like this, then set it on your piece of parchment paper and then smash it with your hand. If you don't have the parchment paper, it can kind of stick to your hand and it gets kind of messy. So go for about a half inch, whatever you want. But if you make it thicker, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook. So can you see the edge on that? You guys know what a burger thickness looks like. Um, okay. Stick it in. There we go. I'm going to do another one. These freeze really well too. This is, this burger is one of my favorite things to take if I'm going on a long hike or I'm going on a long trip, road trip, airplane, whatever, because you can eat them cold and they'll fill you up. Okay. I usually put about three in the pan at once. Don't those look nice? All right. We're going to do one more here. All right. Smash it down. If the edges are kind of splitting a little, just push them back together with your fingers. All right. Boop. So there's no oil in the pan. There's no water in the pan. This is why I'm using my nonstick pan. If you are a person that doesn't want to use a nonstick pan, you can bake these as well. And the instructions for that are on the recipe. Okay. And I'm ready with my silicone spatula. I like to mention this because it's, I just love it. It's not a cheapo, well, it's probably inexpensive. I forget how much it is. 
but it's not plastic, it's silicone. So, and I've had it for years and you'll notice, oh, here, I'll hold it here. The edge is not melted and all messed up. It's still got its nice tapered edge because it's not just plastic, it's silicone, which works better. It's also got a tapered um, end, which is great for burgers and pancakes, hash browns. So this is great. I don't remember if I have this on my website, but just look for a silicone spatula that has a wide, what do you call this, bottom. All right. Now these are, at some point you want to check the bottom to see how brown they're getting. Okay, see this is already cooking quite quickly. But that looks good. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Just leave that one there. Oh, I am not a good flipper. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so you can see what I mean about this pan. It cooks really fast. Uh, I'll turn it down even more. So, wow really, really quick. So there's nothing difficult about this recipe. Um, well, maybe I'll just finish up with those three for now. Let me check the comments here. Okay. It's getting hot in here. All right. Okay. Thank you guys for putting the oven instructions. The pan is by Oziri. Yes. Uh, thanks, Susie. Okay. Oh yeah, there's the pan. Do these freeze well? Yeah, they freeze amazingly well. Uh, yeah, this is an Ozeri. Scan pans are good as well. Okay. Um, okay. Whew. All right. Let's check the other side. That looks pretty good. Not as dark as the other side, so, oh, okay. Okay, I've never tried grilling these because I don't own a barbecue grill, but they would probably work just fine. You just want to make sure you get, you got them nice and tight. You could even probably after you uh, food process the dough, put it in the refrigerator so it's nice and extra sticky togetherness. So I'm going to call these done and I'll finish up the rest later. So I don't have to keep you around for that. And I'm just going to transfer these to this. Okay. And if you weren't here, I would just eat this little piece right now, but I will do that later. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to move this out of the way. Look how beautiful those are. And when they cook, they kind of, they kind of thin up a little, they kind of flatten a little more. So I probably could have made these a tiny bit thicker. Um, it's all good. All right. So we're going to finish up the burgers in a little bit. I want to do the ketchup first. So we have the whole burger fixings. All right, let me get 
the ingredients for the ketchup out. Mm. Ketchup is super easy to make at home. And for this, I'm going to be using my Try Best Personal Blender, which I'm thinking might barely will, will reach over here. Let's see. Um, okay. Okay. So that's as far as it will go. That works. Okay. Let me move the burgers for now. All right, I use this blender a lot. You guys have seen me use this time and again. It's my favorite little blender. I do have a big Vitamix, but when I'm just doing a small amount of something, I like to use the Try Best Personal Blender. And I'm trying to see this. So this makes about one cup of ketchup. If you're a bigger family, just go ahead and double it and use your Vitamix. But when you don't have enough volume in the Vitamix, it doesn't blend very well there at the bottom. So. This is called Try Best Personal Blender. It's on my website store if you're interested. And then um, on their site, they have different packages. This is the plastic. It comes with two tall cups, two short cups, lids, and two blades. Their plastic doesn't have BPA in it, which is really nice, which BPA is not a good preservative we want to be putting around our food. All right, so what's the, what's the issue with ketchup that we buy in the store? It's loaded with salt and it's loaded with sugar. So I'm gonna show you how to make a ketchup that, that everyone will love without added salt and sugar. So the first thing we're gonna do is put in about three quarter cups of water. And then we're gonna put in one can of tomato paste. Again with the tomato paste, no salt added, sorry. I gotta remember to do it this way. Um, this is a no salt added tomato paste. It just has uh, tomatoes and a little BP, uh, not BPA, uh, where is it? Citric acid to maintain the color and the freshness there. So we're gonna do the whole can. If you don't like cans, they have jarred tomato paste you can use as well if you prefer. Uh, there's a brand called BioNature. Uh, which has a good tomato paste. They also have, have it in tubes as well. So we're gonna use the whole jar. The great thing about this tomato paste, and oh, the first time I made this on the live video about a month or so ago, someone asked if it could be frozen, and I wasn't quite sure. So I froze some thinking that it would work, and then when I thought it, I'd probably have to reblend it. I didn't even have to reblend it. Um, so I would keep this in your fridge five or six days. If you think you're not going to use it up in that amount of time, freeze the rest. You won't even have to reblend it when it thaws. I love that. Okay. So the whole jar, the whole can. There we go. Now instead of, now I'm not adding anything in place of salt. I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of granulated garlic and a quarter teaspoon, maybe that's a half, of the green herbs, the Italian green herbs. And then instead of sugar, I'm just adding a half of a apple. This is just a Fuji apple. I've left the peelings on. You can leave them on, leave them off, take them off, doesn't matter. It's all gonna get blended up. You can use any kind of apple you like if you make this at home and you think, oh, it's a little sweet for me, just pull back on the apple. It's all adjustable. And then we're gonna add, lastly, some apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon. This is the apple cider, whoops, vinegar that I'm using. And I'm measuring it with my favorite measuring spoons. Maybe my moderator can put that uh, link there. These are on my website. I just love these. They stick together because they have a magnet. They have two ends, so if you cook a lot, you dirty one end, you still have a clean end. You don't have to wash it in between. And it's got this elongated end to dip into spice jars where this one doesn't always fit. So we are gonna do two, no, 
What did I say? What did I say? One tablespoon, just to give it a little bit of zinginess. If you aren't a vinegar person, you could put in one tablespoon of lemon juice as well. All right. And that is it. I think that's five, one, two, three, six ingredients. Pretty easy. And if you wanted to make this, like jazz it up a little, you could add some curry powder, you could add some uh, cayenne powder and just make it kind of a fun ketchup. All right, so I've, I screwed on the blade. Now we're just gonna blend it until it's nice and fairly smooth. I usually take it off halfway through and just give it a shake. All right. Okay. So take the lid off, take a look at it. See what it looks like. It looks good. All right. Hold on, hold on. Okay. All right, it looks good. I'm gonna take it out. It's, I don't know if you can notice this or if it's just me, but it's a little lighter in color than maybe the ketchup that you're used to. But as it sits, it will darken. As it oxidizes a little, it will darken and it will look more like the traditional ketchup color. Okay. Doesn't that look good? Let me taste that for you. Mmm. So good. It's so good. And if you were to let this sit a couple hours in the fridge, all those flavors would meld together and it'd be even better. Okay. All right, so that is the ketchup. I also have a recipe in my cookbook for really delicious barbecue sauce. I don't have a mustard. Oh, there's always one thing that I forget. Today it's the mustard. Let me grab that out of the refrigerator really quick. So this is the mustard that I use most often. It's the Westbury Natural Stone Ground Mustard, no salt added. It's the only mustard I know about that doesn't have salt added. So if you're really committed to not adding salt to your diet, look this up, Westbury Natural. And um, I usually just order it online because it's pretty hit and miss in the stores to find. I guess there's not as much demand for it. Uh, but if you order it online, you can get like a box of four or a box of 12 or whatever, and then it's nice to have on hand. So I'm just going to have this out uh, to prepare my burgers here. All right. And let me just check the comments before I move on to the last phase. Okay. Cut, this ketchup is so easy. You guys will love it. Don't ever buy ketchup again, I'm telling you. Um, uh, could you use raisins or dates as the sweetener? Sure, in the ketchup. I haven't tried it, but I'm guessing yes. Love the overhead camera. Isn't that nice? Always trying to improve here. Um, okay. Hi, Kenny. Yeah, make this this weekend. Fourth of July is on a Saturday. It's, uh, I guess we'll all be staying in and doing our burgers at home. Um, okay. A quarter cup uncooked rice equate to as cooked rice. Christina asks, what does a quarter cup uncooked rice equate to? So rice triples. So that would make about three quarter cups cooked rice. Okay. You, someone says you could use a George Foreman grill. Yeah, 
I've never tried that, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, do you freeze before or after cooking? I would freeze after um, myself. Okay. Du, 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 du. All right. So I think we're caught up here. Uh, so now we're going to put it together. I'll move my cutting board down. Look at those fixins. Delish. And then we've got our burgers over here. Can we fit everything on? Doesn't that look pretty? Mmm. All right. So I joked last week that you could trick people with the beef stew that we made, the beef less stew that we made. I think you could trick people with this too. Those burgers look like regular burgers to me. Maybe even better. And then once you get all the fixings on, what's inside this, people won't care. Most people, maybe some certain people would. Um, so what I do, I work at True North Health Center. That's where I teach most often. And they don't use bread very much. I have a few sweet breads that I have in my book and on my website, like um, zucchini bread and stuff like that. But bread as an everyday uh, food, they, um, they don't advocate using. Bread is often full of sugar, salt, oil, uh, white flour. If you are going to eat bread, look in the refrigerator or the frozen section of the grocery store because you'll find usually the healthiest breads there. They're in the freezer or the refrigerator because they don't have as many preservatives in them, which is good. And then just read that label. And you guys probably know this, but when you're reading an ingredient label, Whatever comes first, that's what's in there the most uh, by weight. Whatever's at the end is less. Uh, so always read your label whenever you're buying anything in a container or a bag or a box. All right. So I'm not using bread. You can use bread if you want. But what I use is lettuce leaves. Uh, so I've got my lettuce, tomato, avocado, red onion. I'm just going to set this to the side while I put this together. And then what I do with the burger, you can leave it whole, but it's a little bit wide. So I like to cut it in half. I guess I could do that on the cutting board since I have it right here. Go ahead and cut it in half. And then we're going to make a little burger boat. Is that one big enough? Maybe I need a bigger one. Let's try this one. Okay. It might still might not be big enough. Maybe I need the really big one. Okay. You could make smaller ones with just, you know, a half, but I'm going to put both in. Okay. And then we're going to put a little bit of our ketchup on there. Let me center myself a little more. And by the way, this is my Mac knife. It's on my website. It's my most favoritist, favoritist knife. It's a, what is it, seven and a half inch, six and a half inch. Uh, I use this one most often. I even use it to cut my apples. It's just a great size knife. It's a great quality knife. And then I also most often um, when I'm doing something big like butternut squash or onions or um, big bell peppers, I'll use my eight inch chef's knife. And this one is called a dragon. And it's made by Yaxell, Y-A-X-E-L-L. Okay. So I'll put a little ketchup on there. I'm a mustard fiend, so I'm going to put a little bit of mustard. Tomatoes are happening right now. I just ate my first little tomato out of the tomato plant that I grew in my backyard. Very exciting. And a little bit of red onion. 
Mmm. Do you wish you were at my house right now? We would have a great lunch. Okay. And then a little bit of avocado. What do you guys put on your burgers that I'm not putting on mine right now? And as I said, in, instead of the ketchup, you could use the barbecue sauce. That would taste really good. Isn't that beautiful? Now, you probably want to see me eat that. So, never one to disappoint the viewers. And if this was too big, you could always kind of do a little action like that, fold it in. Kind of like a taco. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Isn't that the best part of the cooking show when the chef like eats what they've made and you get to watch them eat it. All right, one more bite. Mm. So good, and I'm so messy. Okay. Mm. So there we go. Let me check your comments. Oh, pickles. Yeah, we tend not to use pickles at True North because they're made with so much salt, but if you eat pickles, sure. Throw some pickles on there. Um, pepperoncini, those little green peppers, sure. Zucchini relish, that sounds good. Do you have a link for the silicone spatula? I don't think I do, but that can be found um, at any kitchen store, um, like a good quality spatula like this. So just ask for silicone or just Google silicone. Okay. Jicama wraps. Mmm. Okay. I'll be at True North July 8th. I don't think I'm going to be there in July. But I'll be here. Um, okay. Um, yeah, Alvarado makes some good bread. Um, Ezekiel is good bread. Is the ketchup recipe in your book? Yeah, it's in there. It's in the uh, sauces and dips chapter. Look in the index. It's called Better Ketchup. Okay. Do, do, do. <clears throat> okay, so thanks for all the comments, you guys. It's so fun to, to read them all. And if you have comments after I'm not live anymore, you can add them, and I'll, I'll look at them a little bit later. After I wash dishes. Ooh, sautéed mushrooms. Yes, definitely. Um, Chef AJ makes quickles. What are quickles? All right, you guys, I wish you were here to eat burgers with me. I'd make the rest and feed you all, but uh, that is it for now. Thank you. We came in under an hour. This is good. This will give you a chance to um, go watch Chef AJ's video if you want. And again, she has a chef on today, and I forget his name, um, but go over to her Facebook page, and you can check that out, or her YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much. I will be here again next Tuesday with another recipe. I forget which one it is. Um, but yeah, that's about it. If you want all the recipes for the month, I sent it out in my newsletter. If you didn't get that and you want the whole list, just email me, Kathy with a C, at straightupfood.com. All right, you guys, thank you very much. I'm going to go eat, and I will see you soon. Thanks.